I'm going to show you how to do a two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel using the Analysis Tool Pack. So the data that I have here is caffeine consumption per day in milligrams, and then a stress score. The stress score is on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the least amount of stress and 10 being the highest amount of stress. I also have my data grouped by male versus female, so I have gender information. With a two-way ANOVA, I have two independent variables. So my two independent variables here are gender and caffeine consumption per day. My dependent variable is stress score. So I want to see how gender and caffeine consumption per day influence stress score. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So when I do a two-way ANOVA, I have what I call main effects and I have interaction. So my main effects would be looking at the relationship of each independent variable on the dependent variable. So I have a main effect looking at caffeine consumption per day and its effect on stress score. And I have another main effect of gender and its result on stress score. Now I have to consider that caffeine consumption and gender could be interacting in some way. So when I look at interaction, I'm looking to see if based on gender, is there a difference in how you react to stress and caffeine consumption. So it's possible that males, when they're under stress, consume more caffeine per day than females do. So for males, the higher the stress score, the more caffeine consumption per day. But that may not be true for females. Now this is just an example to help you illustrate that. We're not really sure if there's interaction between gender and caffeine consumption per day, but we need to consider that when we do an ANOVA. So let's talk about our hypotheses. So we have a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis for each of our main effects. For caffeine and stress score, it would be, the null hypothesis would be that the groups are equal. You could also write this as the mean of group one would be equal to the mean of group two. My alternate hypothesis would be that the groups are not equal. For gender and stress score, my null hypothesis would be that the groups are equal. And my alternate hypothesis would be that they are not equal. Now for interaction, it's a little bit different. For interaction, my null hypothesis would be that there is no interaction. My alternate hypothesis would be that there is interaction. Now it's important to remember these hypotheses after we run our results and for when we're trying to make our interpretation. So we'll come back to these in just a minute. Let's go ahead and run the test in Microsoft Excel in the tool pack. So I'll go to data and go to data analysis. And there's two options for two-factor ANOVA. I have with replication and without replication. The only one of these that will let me look for interaction is with replication. And so most of the time when I'm doing a two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, I'm going to choose the with replication. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to select my data all as one block of text. Now it's remembering what I did previously, and I, I just ran this test recently, so it was remembering that data. But you would just highlight the top corner and drag all the way down and select that whole block of text. What I need to tell it here also is rows per sample. It knows that I have two groups because I'm doing the two factor. So that is like a dependent sample. It means I've got two groups that are matched, but it doesn't know how many are for each. So I need to tell it that I have 15 observations for males and 15 observations for females. So I would put 15 in here. And I'm okay with the significance level being 0.05, so I'll go ahead and leave that. Um, just another note on the rows per sample. With two-factor ANOVA, because it's like a dependent sample test, I have to have equal numbers in my groups. With the one-way ANOVA, I do not. My groups can have uneven numbers. But with the two-factor with replication, I need to have the same number of observations 
in each sample because it's treating it like paired data. So the other thing I like to adjust is the output range. The default for the tool pack is to put it on a new worksheet, but I like it to be somewhere near where I'm already working. So I'll check these settings and then click OK. And then I'll just widen these a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to see my results. So the first thing that I need to look at is to see if there's interaction. If I have interaction between my two independent variables, I cannot use ANOVA. I need to do a different statistical technique. So let me come back to my hypotheses that I had so that we can remember for interaction, my null hypothesis was there was no interaction. So let's come here and interpret our results. So I have my um, results here. First, it gives me summary information for each of my two groups. And then down here in the ANOVA table, I have sample information, columns, and then interaction. So to interpret whether or not there's interaction, let's look at the interaction row. And I come across and I have an F value of 0 0.066 for interaction and a P value of 0.79689. Now that's a pretty high P value. So when I have a P value, I compare that to my significance level that I set, which was 0 0.05. This is much higher than the 0 0.05 level of significance. So that will lead me to conclude that I will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so in this case, my null hypothesis was there is no interaction. So when I fail to reject that, I'm concluding there is no interaction. I'm interpreting this significance level the exact same way as I would interpret significance level in any other test. It's just the result that I want is a little bit different. So it, you have to think of it a little bit backwards. Normally, I don't want the null hypothesis to be true because that would mean there's no difference in the groups, right? This says there's no difference in the groups, which means there's no effect of whatever I'm trying to study and say that I found an effect here. But for interaction, it's saying there is no interaction. And I do want that to be true because I want to be able to use ANOVA. So when I have, uh, when I fail to reject my null hypothesis for interaction, that's a good thing. But I'm making that conclusion the same way. I will compare this p-value that I get from my test to the significance level that I set before I started my test. So we've decided there's no interaction. So the next thing I can look at is the main effects, both caffeine on stress score and gender on stress score. So here I have my results. It says sample and columns. So the easiest way to remember this is the columns one. So come up here and look at how you have your data grouped. And by columns, I have caffeine consumption per day and stress score. So my column information is looking at caffeine consumption per day and the effect on stress score. So when I look at that result, I have an F value of 55.8, which is quite large. And then my p-value is 5.78 to the negative 10 exponent. So this is a quite small number for my p-value. I would have a whole bunch of zeros here. So this is telling me if I compare this very small decimal point number, b.00000, um, to my significance level 0 0.05, that would lead me to reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference. If I compared this, did the other way to determine significance and compared that F value to my critical value, my critical value is 4.0. Anything beyond that, I'll conclude is an extreme result and not due to chance. My um, F value here is 55, so it's quite large. So I would conclude that I would reject my null hypothesis and conclude for caffeine and stress score, I would conclude that the groups are not equal. We do have uh, evidence to say that there is a relationship between caffeine consumption per day and the stress score of the participant. Now with an ANOVA, we don't know exactly what that difference is. We just know there's a difference. So we would want to do some follow-up testing to identify what that difference is. 
So the next result I need to look at is based on gender. And so for that, I would look at the sample information. But the reason that I start with columns is because it's easier for me to remember columns and then look at how I have my data grouped by columns. And so that tells me which one is the column result. And then the other one, which would be the rows, would be my sample result. So here my sample result is looking at the relationship between gender and stress score. And if I come over my F value, it's 0 0.05259. And my P value is 0.81945. So this P value is quite large. If I compare that to the P value or the significance level that I set of 0 0.05, it's much larger. And when my P value is larger than the level of significance, then I will fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, when I fail to reject the null hypothesis for gender and stress score, I'm concluding that the groups are equal. So the groups are equal. We have no evidence to indicate that there's a difference in the stress score based on gender at the 0 0.05 level of significance. So just to recap our results, we concluded that there is no interaction. We concluded that the groups are not equal, so we do have a relationship between caffeine consumption per day and stress score at the 0 0.05 level. And then we concluded that the groups are equal, so we do not have enough evidence to say that there's a difference based on gender and stress score. And then on the second tab of my data file, I, I just have the results. This is a practice file, so if you run the results yourself, you or the test yourself, you can check to see if you get the same results. So I hope that that helped uh, show you how to do the two-way ANOVA with the Microsoft Excel Analysis Tool Pack.